thank you so much for coming and being part of our first service. We are uh, thankful uh, that you chose to worship with us today uh, here in the service or online. We're so uh, blessed to be able to be in the house of the Lord today. Uh, I tell you, uh, we got a good crowd this morning. Uh, you're going to make this preacher preach this morning, aren't you? But uh, we're very thankful again, once again, for uh, you coming and being a part of the service. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the goodness of God. The goodness of God. A lot of times you hear, uh, in a lot of church services, the phrase, God is good. And most of the time, other people, when they would hear that phrase, they would say, all the time. And God is good. And it's a very familiar phrase, and I believe sometimes we let it slip our minds, really, just how God, good God is to us. And so today, as we begin to talk about the goodness of God, I'd like for you just to take a moment, uh, even right now or during this sermon or during the day, and just recognize, really, how good God has been to you. Psalms 107, 1 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. God's goodness is an attribute of his unchanging character. Uh, James wrote in James 1, 17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. The Father of the stars gives us every good gift. I know you probably can look back into your life and you can uh, see the times in the goodness of God in your life. He has given us the family that we have. Isn't God good about that? He gives us uh, the home, the houses, the cars. All the things that we have is because simply the goodness of God and how good God has been to us. First John 1 and 5 says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. We all know where darkness comes from. It comes from uh, the sin nature, humanity, uh, the human sin nature in our lives. And the goodness of God uh, exposes in the darkness that's there. And I believe that I, uh, today, as we go through this and we begin to talk about the goodness of God, we must understand that God has created everything, and everything is good and very good. You see in Genesis uh, chapter 1, where he uh, started with creation, and he looked and he saw that it was good, and then he began uh, to make creation in itself, and all the creatures and all those things that were made and it was very good so uh, God is a good God who loves us and uh, I'm reminded here in Titus chapter 3 starting with verse 3 says for we ourselves were also once foolish disobedient deceived serving various lusts and pleasures living in malice and envy hateful and hating one another but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared not by works of righteousness we which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. How many of you remember before you got saved how wretched you were? How many before you got saved, in, in spite of being and living a life of sin, can really look and see the goodness of God even uh, when you was in a, a, a state of not knowing him as your personal Savior. I can remember growing up and before I was really accepted the Lord as my Savior, I could see the goodness of God all around me. I seen it in my family. 
I've seen it in my parents. I've seen it even in the church services that we was in. I can remember as a little boy when I was under pews playing uh, with little cars and, and just occup occupying my time, all of a sudden I would feel something. It would be the Spirit of God that was in the room that let me recognize that it was God and it was something greater than me. And I didn't understand it quite at the time, but now I understand that it was the presence of God and the goodness of God that was in that room that uh, gave me an assurance, that gave me a peace, even as a little boy, to feel the presence. It wasn't something I was scared of. It was something that I was uh, got up and began to pay attention and to look at and, and to begin uh, later on in life to experience that goodness for myself, that God is good. A lot of times we look at ourselves and we can see the very thing uh, that we've been foolish, disobedient, deceived, and uh, we had various lusts and pleasures in our life. But in spite of all of that, God loved us enough so that he saved us and he uh, re gave us a new life and that he forgave us of our sin to establish us in his goodness and in his mercy. And today, I think this world is so much about hate. This world is so much about all of the things that are going on in this world, about the situations, uh, doom and gloom. There's no hope. There's no peace. But it's all uh, we, we very well know, all of us know, that in spite of it all, if we have Jesus, we have everything. We have the new hope, we good news. We have hope. We have his peace and his rest. And I believe today that God is showing us and telling us, uh, uh, don't forget about his goodness towards us. We might see all the things that are happening in this world, and we might see all the calamity that's going on and all of the things that uh, we can look at and we say, you know what, I don't like this or I don't like that. But in spite of it all, we can rest in the goodness of our God knowing that he will work it out and that he not only will work it out but he will work it out to our good and I'm so thankful that we can trust him aren't you I'm so thankful that we can trust him and his goodness towards us and we ourselves must understand that it's his goodness and who he is and that he wants to bless us and help us and he wants us uh, to cast all of our cares upon him and allow him to move on our behalf to really show his goodness towards us. I'm reminded of the story in Exodus chapter 33 when Moses was on Mount Sinai. We've talked about this and uh, we've talked about all around the Israelite children the last few uh, uh, Sundays and uh, about their process and uh, all the things that we talked about in the last few weeks. But here Moses is on the mountain with God and God begins uh, to talk with him. And in verse 13 it says this, this is what Moses says. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, Show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. Verse 14 says, And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, If your presence, this is Moses talking, does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that ye have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, Please show me your glory. And then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is a place by me and you shall stand on the rock, so it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while 
I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, and my face shall not be seen. I know we see this, and he says that all of his goodness will pass before you. This is on Mount Sinai, and this is before he got the tablets and began to write the Ten Commandments on the tablets. His desire, Moses' desire, was to see the Lord. And I believe that this holds a key to us in the spiritual sense as well. We must understand that in the presence of God was when Moses requested to see his glory. It was in his presence. And then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I believe that that is something that we must understand is that we have to be in the presence of God, amen, to help us realize God's goodness in those things. I know a lot of times we get so far uh, into this world and about our circumstances and our situations and, and it seems as though we get so focused on those things and we lose sight of, of getting in our prayer closets and we lose sight of getting in the presence of God. But that's where I find that his goodness reigns uh, in my life when I get in his presence when everything is difficult and I just begin to worship him and thank him and get in his presence, then his goodness begins to pass for, uh, by me and I begin to remember all of the things God has done for me. And I don't know about you, but I can't help but to get excited when I think about the goodness of God and what he's done for me. And I'm so thankful that we simply, all we have to do is get into his presence and begin to worship him and begin to exalt his name on high and begin to proclaim him as king of kings and lord of our lives and get into his presence where we will see his goodness it will open our eyes and let us remind and remind ourselves that even though it seems the situation be tough and the situation might be rugged if i can just get back in his presence god will begin to change my very thinking and he will begin to develop in me and a goodness and a, and a great for the things that he has done in my life. Aren't you glad that when you get in the presence of God, you see his goodness all around you? There's nothing like being in the presence of God, especially when you're dealing with trials and tribulations and you're dealing with situations that you don't know how to handle. Instead of focusing on them, how about get in the presence of God and you'll see his goodness that he has for you. His goodness will pass by. You will begin to feel and sense his love in your life and know that he will take care of you. See, a lot of times is we go through life and we don't recognize the goodness of God is simply because we just ignore it. We're so focused on what we're doing. We focus on our agenda. We focus on all of the things that we like, that uh, the pleasures that we have in life. And we see all of the things that are going on, and we focus on those things, and yet we forget to see God in all of the situations that we're in. We like to look at the problem instead of looking at God and looking at His ability. See, His ability is limitless, but our thinking is limited. And when we submit our limited mind to the unlimited God, then we allow him to take control of the situation. And when we get in his presence and begin to worship him for who he is and to get in his presence, then all of his goodness will begin to pass by and we can realize within ourselves how good God truly is. I like what he says. He says, you know what? No man can see me and live. And I believe that should be spiritually as well. We should see God in all things so that we can die, so that our wants can die, so that our selfishness can dissipate, so that we ourselves can die to what we want and see the goodness in God and who he is. And, and, and I, know, I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't want to die. I'm talking about spiritually. Get ourselves out of the way. We, we are reborn when we ask him to our lives, right? We, we ask him into our lives. It's a new birth. It's a new way of thinking. It's a new way of acting. And when we die to who we are and we allow Christ to enter our lives, we will see his goodness and mercy in everyday situations. Moses was saying, show me your glory. Show me 
your glory. I don't know about you, but there's been things that I've faced in my life that have been hard. I'm sure you probably can look back in situations in your life where it was hard for you. Times where you probably didn't even think that you were going to make it. But now that you look back, you really see the goodness of God in all of it. Could you imagine how Job felt when he was going through the hardship of losing everything that he had? I understand in all of that he still had faith and he still trusted in God. And he still went forth and he still uh, uh, was serving God. And he said, though they uh, slay me, yet I'm still going to trust the Lord. Though his friends tried to tell him how wrong he was, he knew how right his God was. And he began to focus on the goodness of God. And then God restored unto him the things that he lost. My, my, my. I tell you, there's times in our lives where we lose a lot of things because of our selfishness. There's a lot of times we lose a lot of things because we want to control it. But if we'll just let go and give it to God, God will restore it unto us and he will bless us beyond compare. And we will see his goodness and we'll see his mercy and we'll see that he has our best interests at heart. And we can rejoice knowing that it's not by what we've done, but it's all by the goodness of God. His goodness. We all like the scripture in, in the last days, perilous times will come and we know that we're there. We know that these perilous times are there, but there's no reason for us to lose hope. More, more, more assuredly, there's a reason for us to rejoice because we know our Savior is soon returning. There's a place for us to rejoice because we know that God in His goodness towards us and that everything that we have is His anyway. And He will bless us and He will watch over us. And he will begin to do whatever it takes in our lives for us to see his glory and to see his goodness in it. Today when we look at all that's going on and we can look in our lives, we see God in all of his goodness and all of his mercy. In Psalms 34 and 8, it says this, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Today, it doesn't matter the circumstances. What matters is how big our God is. Sometimes the storms of life may be raging, but we know the master of the wind, the maker of the rain, we know that he can cry and say, peace be still, and the storm will be still. Even in the midst of the storm, when the men were tossed and turned, they thought their life was over. They seen Jesus walking by. In the midst of the storm, his goodness followed them. And when they cast their eyes on him, they seen who it was and Peter said, Lord, if that be you, bid me to come. And what did he say? Come. That is the key. When things get tough and things get rough, don't run away from God. Run to God. Get in his presence and realize his goodness and that he has protected you this far and that he will continue to do so as long as we worship him and trust in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Every experience in everyone's life has a footprint of God in it. You might not like the outcome of it. You might think that it, was, uh, uh, it wasn't the best thing that happened, but in it all, God's goodness will be revealed in due time if you just continue to trust in Him. The circumstance might um, not look like it's resolved today, but there's going to be a future where you're going to see God's goodness revealed. I can't tell you how many times that I've walked away from relationships with other people that I thought, you know what, there's no way of restoration. But after a few years, God began to restore that relationship. And you look back and you see in all of that the goodness of God. There have been times where situation has arose and I thought, you know what, there's no hope. There is no way that this can be resolved. And all of a sudden, you see the goodness of God come forth and restoration take place. I tell you, today, we understand 
that it all don't look good sometimes, but it all's going to end good if you trust in God. Because His goodness is secure. His goodness is everlasting. His goodness is who He is. And I believe today when we look at it and we see all the things uh, uh, that, uh, that are in our life, when it's last said and done, we're going to say, God is good. He's good. 1 Timothy 4, 4 and 5 says, For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Everything in this world is sanctified. We can sanctify it in prayer. It is good. And I believe with all of my heart that God shows us every day how good he is to us. But it's our job to recognize his goodness in our everyday life. And that sometimes is the hardest part. Sometimes it's hard to see goodness in pain. Sometimes it's hard to see goodness when it seems like everything is falling apart or everything that could go wrong goes wrong. But in spite of it all, we live on this earth in time. God don't have time. He has his time. He don't work on our worldly clock, he works on his clock. And I've never found God to be too late. God has always been on time. Why? Because he is a good and merciful God. Psalms 31, 19 says, Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the Son of Man. Oh, how great is your goodness. I tell you, in our lives, when we come to the realization of where we could have been and where we actually are, I believe you can see the hand of God and his goodness towards us. There's times that I've wondered if I chose differently or if I made a different decision how it would work out. In reality, the Bible tells us all things work to the good for those who love him. And it's through his leading, it's through uh, our relationship with him that he leads and guides us. It says in Je Jeremiah 29, 11, which we know so well, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, the thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God's goodness is accessible to everyone. A lot of people are jealous of the goodness of God in other people's life, right? We call it trying to keep up with the Joneses, right? We think that we have to have everything everybody else has, do everything that everybody else does. But if we submit ourselves to us, God says, listen, I know the plans I have towards you. They're to give you a future and hope. That hope rests in him alone. And he will not withhold any good gift from you. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he loves us today. That he is, will give us everything. And he will do everything that he possibly can do. Even to the amount that even when we mess up and make mistakes, all we have to do is repent and ask for forgiveness. And he says what? He'll forgive us. And the reality in that alone shows his goodness. That even when we mess up, we can go to him. We can cry out to him and we can ask for forgiveness and he'll forgive us of our sins and he'll embrace us with his goodness and with his love. I tell you, I stand behind this pulpit talking about the goodness of God. If it wasn't been for God in my life and the goodness that God has given me, I wouldn't be here today. 
I don't think that I would be behind a pulpit today had it not been for God's goodness and his mercy towards me. And I'm sure that you could say the very same thing today had it not been for God and his goodness in your life. You probably wouldn't be sitting where you're sitting today. Simply through his, good, his goodness to us. So really, how good is God? We know that God is goodness because we see it in his creation. How he created the world, how he uh, 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 just talked and, and, and by his word began to fashion the world. And you see all of the goodness and all the resources that we get from this world. You see it in our lives and how we live out our lives. But he took the ultimate and paid the ultimate price of his goodness towards us. And we read it in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The goodness of God, seen the error in man, seen the sin of Adam and Eve, and he gave his son so that we could be in right standing with him once again. If God ever did anything else for us, that alone is more than enough. His goodness towards us that he sent his son to be the sacrificial lamb, the once and for all sacrificial lamb, to go on the old rugged cross and die on the cross and spill his blood. And be buried and rose again on the third day. Can we not see the goodness of our God? Just as though Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. I encourage you today that when life gets rough and you're going through tough spots in your life, don't retract from God. Don't. Don't run away from God. Run to Him. Get in His presence. And His glory will pass before you. And His goodness will pass before you. And you will see God in ways that you've never seen Him before. When you get in His presence and you begin to cry out to Him and you begin to ask Him to meet your need and to help you, you will begin to see a change in the atmosphere because we, we don't pray to change God's mind. We pray to change us. And when we pray to change us, that's allowing God and his goodness to come into the situation and to get ourselves out of the way and allow God to move on our behalf so that we can see his goodness and his mercy towards us. You see it all through the Old Testament. You see it all in the New Testament. When people would submit themselves to God, God would make the destruction and the bad things in our life, good. Why? Because he loves you and I. And he cares so deeply for us. So when you go through this week and you're struggling, maybe you got an answer you wasn't ready for. Or maybe you got a decision that you thought should be something else. Instead of getting upset and focusing on that thing, how about just begin to get in the presence of God? How about acknowledging him in the midst of that situation and allow his goodness to cover you and allow his mercy to overtake you and remind yourself of all the times that you've been in bad spots, but his goodness and mercy made a way of escape for you. His goodness, there's a song that says, his goodness is running after Today, God's running after you. He wants to help you. He wants to supply your need. He wants to show you his glory and his goodness. It's only up to us to open our eyes and our hearts to receive the goodness of God, to see his mercy, to see his love for us. I believe with all of my heart today that it's through his goodness that we have hope to know 
that if he worked out our past, he'll work out our present, and he'll also work out our future. And we can rest in him, knowing and trust him, and taste and see the goodness of who he is in our life. The hardest thing to do for me as a person is to be around negative people all the time. I don't know if I'm the only one in the room. Because what I realize is when people start talking neg negatively about situations, then before I know it, I'm starting thinking the same thing. And I have to go to the Lord and I'm going to say, Lord, you, you, I need your help. And then I get in the presence of God and begin to remember all the goodness, and His goodness and mercy in my life. And it adjusts my thinking and it adjusts my heart. And it allows me to take another step in faith knowing that he'll supply our needs. Our, our need. See, sometimes when we get in the presence of God, that's what adjusts our mind. That gets our mind right, gets our heart right. When the enemy has tried to distract us. So today, whatever you're facing, whatever situation you're going through today, just think about the goodness of God. Get into his presence and allow his goodness to pass you by today. Let us stand this morning. Lord, we come to you today and we just thank you so much for your goodness. Lord, even in the hard times of our lives, Lord, we see your hand and we see your goodness. We see your grace and your peace and your rest, even in the hard times. And Lord, we're so thankful that you've had your hand on our lives for so many years. Everyone in this room, Lord, can testify of your goodness in their lives. And we just want to thank you today for your goodness. We want to thank you today for your mercy and your grace. We want to thank you, Lord, that when everyone else leaves us, Lord, you're still here with us. And that you'll go with us always to the ends of the earth. And, Lord, that if we can just acknowledge you, Lord, that we can feel your presence once again. And we can see your goodness towards us. Lord, I pray that if those in this building or on Facebook, Lord, are struggling today, they'll be reminded of the goodness and how good you are. God, that they'll begin to cry out to you and allow your goodness to pass by them and restore them and give them the hope. Give them a hope, Lord, to know that you're with us and that you have our best interest at heart. And Lord, we just thank you today of your goodness and how good you have been and how good you are and how good you will be in the future of our church, in the future of our congregation. God, we just thank you and we just give you praise because we know better things are yet to come. And we rest in that and we taste that and we see that your goodness will follow us and go with us and even go before us in your favor. And we're going to see miracles and signs and wonders, Lord, to follow. Because we believe in who you are and your goodness towards us. God, we just give you thanks and we just give you praise. Lord, that you have been with us this far and you'll go with us to the end. And we're so thankful of your goodness and your mercy to us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.